<laughs> Welcome to the end of the season, Jacques. It's a beautiful end of the year. We're still growing here, but... We're still growing. San Diego, casual, not a big deal. But today, we figured we'd take a look at some of our biggest successes in the garden, our biggest failures, and some hilarious moments, because it's been quite a year. It has been. There's definitely been a lot of wins, but you know, there's a couple of mistakes along the way, and we don't like to hide it, because that's how you learn. Yeah, we don't like to hide it. Certainly, I... I love to, I guess, self-flog and show you all of my failures. But we're gonna kick it off with a couple successes. First, come in a little bit more light. Okay, let's see. So, okay, Jacques, this is from the Homestead Channel. Oh, you know what this is. This is, this is old Cabbage Daddy. <laughs> what do you think? How, how, how compact do you think it's gonna it's get? It's gonna be perfectly compact. Oh, the faith you have in me. I believe wow. it. Wow, okay. it's a first. Because, oh, I'm, I'm that sure sound? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. it hits the same every yeah. time. That crispness. Look at that. <laughs> Honestly? Come on. That's a perfect purple cabbage. Oh, I really still have nice. not grown a purple perfect one. Yeah. yeah. And I need that. So the tip, the win that we had there really was the timing of the plant and keeping a nice amount of compost on it when it was growing out. Because it's cabbage is really just leaves that kind of do this. Right. Right, and so that's all nitrogen based. You want a lot of organic matter. Next up, we've got, oh, you know what this is? This is, so back in the day, whenever I'd be on an interview or someone would ask me, they'd say, what plant should a beginner grow? And I'd yeah. always say radish because it's such an easy plant to grow. But I don't know about you, I never really truly loved the radish. I've never respected it. <laughs> <laughs> so what we that's tried it. to do is we tried to figure out a way to love the radish on this video and we ended up turning it into a pizza. I have to say though, yeah. I remember this bite, and it looks really funny, but it was actually good. It was fire. It was like, if you told me it was a radish, I'd be like, okay. It looks, it looked like a little like Vienna sausage yeah. link, yeah, like yeah, a little yeah, cross yeah. section of a sausage. And then like the other trick was putting a little bit of fresh salt on it and eating mm, it. Hitting that salt. It was salt. better, but I'm still not loving it. I would say if you really want to enjoy a radish fresh, cut it thin. Yeah. And maybe do a little salt, maybe even a little olive oil. Yeah. You know, I, something I don't like mind that it as a good. garnish. And that point, a radish really just is a vehicle for the salt and the olive oil, but either way, you know, <laughs> you still like it. Okay, I would say like, I don't know if this was a true success. This is in our success category. I don't think it's a true success. We sort of hacked our way into liking the radish yeah, by adulterating it, it with it. all these different things. Nevertheless, like if you actually have a great way to prepare radishes you think we will enjoy, then drop it in the comments. Moving on to one of our failures. This is the chicken run. <laughs> oh oh my this. God, this was bad. So we, okay, so the idea here was we have the chicken coop, but I wanted the hens to be exposed yeah. to natural sunlight, have some natural forage. I could toss scraps more easily, just a better life More interactive. Them. And so we literally expanded out the custom Carolina coops that we installed here at the homestead with a DIY design. Yeah. And I'm emphasis on the DIY. <laughs> emphasis on the DIY. On the why. Everything you're seeing us do here, we undid <laughs> later. They realized something. We're so bad at this. We're really, really so bad. <laughs> what we did wrong is we didn't set it, number one. We didn't set oh, the concrete. Oh, right, the remember? concrete was still wet. The concrete was still wet, so we were trying to move it, and it was just moving itself. But then we actually ended up having to remove all of this chicken wire yeah. and replace it with a hog panel, uh, which actually is a way better material. The end result is a success. Yeah. But this initial... <laughs> We yeah, like we, we called in. We <laughs> called in Paul on the team, uh, resident builder, resident expert, and he actually worked a little bit of magic. He has a little bit more patience than we do, <laughs> so this ended up working out. Okay, okay. So here's what I wanted to do. I wanted to again find a way to love something. I love beets actually now. I like them roasted. Yep. I like golden beets. Golden beets are delicious. They're very nice. A beet salad actually, traditionally and maybe in your culture, Bulgarian culture, they love it with vinegar and tarragon. Very nice. Not bad. But I wanted to find a different way to love it. I saw this recipe for beet ravioli. Basically, you use the mushed up beets to sort of color and flavor the dough. So what I did is I actually had beautiful smaller ravioli because I had a custom ravioli kit. But the problem is I had a, too much left, right? <laughs> but, but too little to make more, but a, just enough to make one big one. And so I made, I made an epic rav, and you'll see what happened here. Look at my face. I'm so scared and nervous. Oh, you're thinking the same thing I just... <laughs> oh, and then I immediately broke the side. No. <laughs> then I just dumped oh. butter. Like, what am I doing so here, dude? It's so bad. <laughs> Here's the one thing that we both have in common is I'm going to throw you under the bus with yeah, me. Yeah, hit me. We're horrible at plating. Oh, yeah. We can make something that tastes good. It's not going to look Don't good. Don't catch me on, you know, not gonna look Great good. British Bake Off or something. 
So I ended up giving this to uh, Charlie on the team. <laughs> Just a puddle of butter. And and Charlie, giant, Charlie's like, a happy guy, you know. If, yeah. if it could it could look terrible, he's still down to eat. <laughs> look at that face. I mean, he loves it. He loves it. <laughs> he had no comment. But Paul comes in. Here's Paul. Paul doesn't even eat vegetables, so. This is the only way to get Paul to eat vegetables. Covered in butter. Watch that face. That's no joke. Oh, like, I liked it. He says, yeah. that's no joke. That's high praise from him. So, Jacques, was this a failure or was this a success? I think in the end, it's a success. <laughs> a little bit of dirty magic? A little bit of dirty magic. We're going to a blooper, a funny moment. <laughs> My new favorite method of planting, the trowel slide in. So I love the trowel slide try. in. You come in, boom, pull it to then, the side. Oops. oops. Yeah, when it's wet, it works a lot better. Better when it's wet, yeah. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Anyway, <laughs> you go in there, as they say. <laughs> you know, if there's if there's one thing, the gardening world is rife with innuendo. I'm, it's too easy. I do it all the time, apparently, and I don't even know I do it until I read the comments. Jacques, so. What Jacques will do is he'll drop he'll drop a line either on our homesteading channel or on his own channel, and sometimes your partner is like in the background <laughs> watching you film, yeah. and she'll just be like, "You can't say that." <laughs> Should be like, cut, 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 cut. okay, this one's titled, We Shouldn't Be Allowed to Do This. Oh, this was the hack. Oh, I don't yeah. know which one we're gonna show dirty, here. Dirty little dozen. You think I can do this? I think, oh. <laughs> I think, I, I'm gonna say yes, because I've seen you catch things that I didn't expect. Well, here's the problem is, so set the scene. This is <laughs> a video that we wanted to do. We wanted to make a ho fully homegrown burger. Yeah. And, I mean, come on, look at this vibe set right yeah, here. This I mean, is amazing. We got potatoes, we got onions, we got buns. We that's got, a feast. It's an absolute Artichoke feast. carts, little baby artichokes. You know what? This is where you showed me how to cook the artichokes yeah, really the artichoke well. burger. Yeah. You come in Classic. and you steam those boys real good. Oh, yeah. So, I'm about to show Jacques I know for my hibachi I skills. <laughs> Maybe he needs to go back to Benihana. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, what? So oh, for the doubt. Toss. Ready? Right? And then I'm not very confident. Not gonna, <laughs> I'm not either. Look at my face. I'm, I'm terrified. Yeah, that's the idea. Ready? Right. Hey, you did it. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> but, perfect. What, what I'll say though, let's go to the bite. Look at those burgers, man. Honestly, we should do this again. Because those were actually really good. <laughs> wow. Big boy bite. I really took a big bite. <laughs> We just can't even speak. <laughs> hey, I will say though, you've cut a lot since then. Of weight? Yeah. I have. Wow, yeah. look at my face, yeah. dude. You've cut a lot since yeah. then. Yeah. Hey, maybe it was our trick burger. All the bullying in the comments has really gotten to me, <laughs> and I decided to finally lose some weight. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for abusing me. Appreciate it. Okay, so this is apparently a success. A with a success. I mean, oh, oh yeah. You had amazing artichokes. Even yeah. And they're coming back. And how big mm -hmm. they've gotten this. I would say. The first time I ever saw artichokes grown was at an old friend's garden in like East County, San Diego. Okay. And big yeah. old grow bags. Yeah, because they get big. And that's what kind of sparked me of like, oh, these actually should do really well here. Yeah. Then I put them in that corner that all of you probably know really well by now. Something this about that mottled massive. shade just lets them produce like crazy. But I mean, look Insane, at these guys. Insane, dude. The best about, looking artichokes I've seen, guys. personally. Yeah. Probably got about 25 yeah. this year. Something like that. Like I wouldn't that. be surprised at all. Obviously, we just saw them in that burger, so. Really good success. Jacques, this one might be our <laughs> biggest success of the year. Like, Honestly, no doubt. The onion's like this big. Yeah. I've never seen it before. I mean, look at, bulbs. we'll see at the curing table. <laughs> <laughs> Just another day, right, Jacques? I mean, I'm used to it. <laughs> We're so, <laughs> You're so cocky. Yeah. I'm not but even dude, done yet, I mean, come well, on. Look at that. So here's the thing about it though, is just like the cabbage, we figured out the variety yeah. to grow and the time to grow it. I actually planted those basically this time last yeah. year, somewhere at time around December, yellow granex onions. That's a big one. That one tends to do really well in the Southwest. Was it red rock? Red, red something, but either way, the thing that, to remember about onions is that basically the lower you are, the closer you are to the equator, the shorter your days. It sounds counterintuitive, yeah. but it is not. Because if you think about the summer when onions are really producing, the further up you are, think about Alaska. It's yeah. basically sunny 24 hours a day. So there's way more light, that's a longer day. So that was our secret, I think, to the onions, is giving them the time to grow. And, and the right variety. The right variety. Because these things were just absolutely This inspired massive. me to grow more onions so, this year. Did it really? Yeah. We think this is Definitely yeah. doubling down. And the, come on, look at that thing. It's so the, big. the biggest onion ended up being 3.15 pounds or something like that. Just that's a monster. absolutely ridiculous. All right, back to some fails here. Oh. oh, well, this was the saddest failure. Too sad. Of the year. <laughs> Too sad. I don't even want to say it. So, this was the garlic crop, Jock. Yeah. 
it got covered in garlic rust, too much rain, maybe a little too close together. And basically like the biggest head was, I, I can't even, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> the problem is I planted 250 heads of garlic in the back beds. Yeah. We got way more rain than we ever expected because garlic is pretty much a easy crop to grow. It's usually like you just put it there and you forget about it. Yeah, yeah, mulch but it every now and then. Too much rain was a problem for sure. Yeah, and I, I do say like, I violated my own principles. I spaced them way too close, kind of still thinking I'm in this really small space oh, and right. I, I want to cram stuff in. Yeah. And if I had just spaced them out, I would have got probably a hundred perfect heads instead of 250, Which is you know, obviously better. <laughs> gar garbage tier heads. So this video we did with homegrown grains. Yep. So we had millet, amaranth, and a little bit of wheat. The wheat was not homegrown this time. No, but we it wanted, was whole. We want to mix in some ancient grains. So we used the Nutramill grain mill to make some homegrown scones <laughs> on the homesteading channel. Honestly underrated. I think this deserves more beans. <laughs> you look like some kindergarten class made some scones and brought them to the bake sale. <laughs> so that's the thing is that's our plating skills as we were as we were making this we first of all realized there's no way you could reasonably call these scones like they don't look like scones at all but then i took these little tiny current style tomatoes oh, that's these tiny were. little tomatoes yeah, yeah, yeah. and we put them in and they started literally looking like children's play-doh <laughs> And that's why Jacques losing his mind. Sure. <laughs> like so I'll tough. tell you this. Here's what for. If my future kid brought this to me and said, Daddy, look what I made, I would have to choke back a laugh and <laughs> say I was proud of him, but I wouldn't mean it. Tell us you're proud of us in the comments. Tell us you're proud <laughs> of your two little boys. But what we, we discovered that this was actually a uh, Cheddar Bay biscuit or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The red it lobster was, biscuit. It was like a red lobster biscuit <laughs> in the end. This video was actually really fun. Yeah. This is the first time that either of us ever tried proper canning, specifically pressure canning. So we have a Presto pressure canner here, and what we decided to do was make a zesty salsa. <laughs> yeah, still looking for the meaning. Don't know what zesty is, don't know how to make it exactly, but what I will say is the resulting salsa, once you taste it, it, it was you, you know what zesty yeah. is. So it's one of those things where one, when you see it, you know, else is absolutely, yeah, don't yeah, mess around. Because there's always that fear that I've heard, you know, of like blowing your house up. So I don't want to do that. Yeah, or blowing your face off, honestly. Yeah, I'll, that's not good either. In this face, that. you know. <laughs> Without it, what do I have? <laughs> Right, so hey, you know, I will shop. say you have a fan base. You have a few, you've gotten a few messages, you know? Hey, a couple of nice we'll compliments. Leave, we'll leave out that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back up to successes. Okay, so this is our peach harvest. This was the same tree that we've had basically since we started, except for it happens to have like rocketed up way past yeah. other, other stuff in the garden. And it was basically a dead tree. Mm -hmm. Like it was in a pot dead, we gave up on it. Jacques topped it off and then it just started going like a rocket. We probably got 200, 250 <laughs> peaches this yeah, year. That juice? Yeah, I mean, come on. The waterfall shows you everything you need to know, just dripping off the chin. Ended up making a really nice peach cobbler yeah. with this. But what I would say is for peaches and stone fruits, if you're in a warm climate, it really just is down to variety selection. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think there's really much else to know about growing them super well. I mean, there's some pruning tips that we can share with you, more of like a vase mm -hmm. sort of structure. But besides that, this thing just ripped. I honestly didn't know you could grow peaches this tasty in San Diego. Mm -mm. And it's kind of made me reconsider Maybe doing it. Yeah, I just yeah. don't have anywhere to put it. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem, right? Space. The only other thing I'd say is what helped us this year with these peaches was thinning the fruit out. Yeah. So there were probably about 500 small peaches. We removed about half and got 250 much more sort of sizable and delicious fruits. Yeah. So it's painful to do, but it, it is You'd rather have necessary. fewer better ones than like a bunch of mediocre ones, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, exactly. So this is the addition of the new hens here at the homestead. We had six originally. Unfortunately, we lost one Gucci, our gold lace Wyandotte. I decided to add three more because chicken math. Feeling a little lonely. Yeah, a little lonely. Wanted to raise more from, from babies. Actually, now they are probably getting close to laying. John. Yeah, and they're all hanging out together. They seem to be good friends. And I'm waiting to see that buff Brahma, how big oh, she gets. Oh boy. Yeah, we got a buff Brahma. <laughs> it's like massive, massive hen. Uh, I don't know. If you haven't gotten into chickens, we got a couple great guides on the channel that you can check out. Very rewarding. One of the more rewarding things you'll do sort of outside the garden, but related to gardening. Okay, so this is a fail. I think it's probably just the corn this year. Wasn't it's, so good. It sounded like a lot of people had a corn problem this year. Corn and tomatoes were a struggle. Mm -hmm. And you still got it, right? There was yeah. just a lot of earworms. The thing we had to do with these corn, as you'll see, is basically cut off the top third. Yeah. Because that corn earworm really will get in there. And if you don't know what that is, it's sort of like a green, army worm looking caterpillar yeah. that will burrow in and kind of eat the top, maybe third Circle or Circle so. around the rows. Yeah, yeah, and it's it looks really gross, honestly. Yeah, But it when you cut there. it, 
you're okay. Yeah, totally fine to yeah. cut it out. Cut, wash, steam the corn, you're in a good yeah. spot. I still would would have liked a better corn. And you have a tip that actually prevents the earworms. That's right, there's like a couple things. You could put the mineral oil, you could put the little rubber band once the silk emerges, yeah. and that should stop them entirely. Yeah. But you, you, you just, just have to do it to every single one. I know, yeah. You just <laughs> need the, you need the uh, adult butterfly or moth yeah. to be unable to lay an egg. Exactly. And that's basically how you would prevent it. I guess the mineral oil will maybe suffocate them or I something like that I think that's the idea, too. yeah. If you drop it down the silks, they just kind of get choked out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is hanging the peppers. I just couldn't figure it out, guys. I don't know what to say. I was hanging purple millet and some peppers. I was giving Jacques a hard time on how to tie these things yeah. up. He obviously knew better than me. You know I, one knot, but you know it well. Yeah, and I got a little obsessed with it on this video, so yeah. <laughs> the overhand knot saves the day. But I will say though, there's like, a time and place. There's a time and tying place. Tying these babies up, the restress, right, yeah. of, of peppers. I have always admired when you go into like, I don't know, a Mexican kitchen or yep. an Italian kitchen, you see that hanging on the walls. And I was always like, Such I don't know vibe. if I could get there myself. It turns out, we'll show you on the screen, these turned out amazing. They're hanging yeah. in the shed right now. Thai chilies, habaneros, Hungarian bells. And they feel good, like they're dried up nicely. Dried, no rot. It's a time-honored technique. So we had a lot of fun doing this. It actually takes quite a bit of time. <laughs> yeah, a lot of time. So maybe like light a fire, get a good vibe, but preserving <laughs> those peppers, especially when you grow as many as we do, it was it was a great time. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a, oh my. <laughs> oh, I forgot about these. <laughs> you forget, forget about this leak? Yeah, so I would say it was, to me, like a, it was the year of the know, allium for me. Yeah. I had great, onions and great leeks. I didn't have such great garlic. Two or three uh, good, bad. good cabbage, but I mean, come on, look at that leek. That's, that thing is like I've never. I didn't even know they could get that big. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on. You're juicing those onions, you're juicing those leeks. I'm, pretty, I'm doing some something. <laughs> I won't it's tell a, you. Maybe it's a, a dirty special secret, fertilizer. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just variety yeah. and time and conditions, and it grew really, really well. I mean, what would you say was your biggest win of the whole year? Biggest win? Honestly, for me, tomatoes were a win this year. You had a good tomato. I had an insane amount of tomatoes, especially yeah. on the beef steaks. I was extremely pleased with that. Yeah. I had the same issue with garlic. My onions were definitely not as big, but tomatoes, fantastic here, and I'll take it. So this is like not the first time we harvested this much from the garden. For me, it was a year of some hits and some misses, a lot going on, uh, but I had some great wins. I'm looking forward this year to like really expanding out the garden, getting a little bit more precise. I was telling Jacques, yeah. I really want to grow pristine vegetables this year. Really healthy, performant yeah. garden, um, and just have a little bit of a more even balance of produce. So like a normal amount of all these things, but a good amount of each, Yeah, right? quality over quantity. Quality over quantity, I don't know, what about you? For me, I think it's just going to come down to less varieties. I keep mm. saying that and I keep not doing it. Yeah. This year I really wanna do it because I have way more of random things, like disjointed amounts of everything, that I can't make anything cohesive with it. Mm -hmm. So I'd much rather have a lot of a single thing, so I could just make something. Like one or two tomato varieties versus 20. Oh, well, let's not get that extra. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we wanted to show you some of our successes and failures, encourage you on your gardening journey. We are also learning along with you, kind of just showcasing what we do here at Epic Gardening. Share your successes and fails. Love Thanks for it. a great year here in the garden. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing. <laughs>